Corolla, I tease, I tease that there's maybe a Shark Tank idea here. No, nah, it's already been done. I started looking. It? Oh, you looked it up? Yeah. What is somebody, it? It's, it's already been done. So last week, uh, GTA 6, Grand Theft Auto 6, that trailer broke the internet. In 24 hours, more than 93 million views. Well, in the trailer is Tom Petty's song, Love is a Long Road. So that song came out back in 1989. But according to Spotify, that song has streamed an increase of 36,979%. Like, it has gone through the roof. So what's the Shark Tank idea? So uh, my idea was, I'm like, why don't they just release Grand Theft Auto soundtracks? And they do have them on Spotify. But I'm thinking like on Apple, like on iTunes or something like that. You could just release the whole soundtrack. I mean, people are going to buy. I mean, look what they're doing for just one song. They should have the whole soundtrack out right now because we got to wait two years for the, you know, the game to come out. And now this guy um, in Florida, he's in Miami. During that trailer, there's a clip. Shows a man in a prison uniform, and he's got facial tattoos, make him kind of look like the Joker, like Jared Leto's Joker. Oh, Lord. And oh, Lord. this guy, he's a tattoo model. He went viral back in 2017 because he looks like the Joker. He's now demanding $2 million from Rockstar Games for using his likeness in GTA 6 without his consent. And I've seen the side-by-side. It looks similar, but not exactly, not mm-hmm. close. Will a judge think he has well, enough I don't think weight so. in his case? And I'm can, I'm, think, I'm thinking much. that he's not going to have the money to take on their lawyers. That's no, and you can, how can you 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 can't put your finger on that? That's creative recreation. I don't. Know, there's a there's a license. Yeah, because there. he he tattooed himself to look like a a, a fictional character. Oh right. And that, then he's that claiming that they oh, that yeah. they copied him. No, dude, bro, you copied that, and then they're copying that also. So well, you have no case probably, to Well, he's probably throwing the $2 million lawsuit out there hoping that here's a $100,000 kid, go away. Make it go away. Um, okay, it's the holiday season. I know we're like right in the thick of it. I saw people over, over the weekend out in their front yards fiddling with their strands of lights, trying to wrap them on something and get the Christmas beer all over their house. And, uh, you know, this is now where we're thinking about like gift giving or there's people in your life you want to give a gift to. Uh, there was a list about the biggest mistakes that we make around Christmas time when it comes to thinking you're going to enjoy the holidays and you're really just exhausted and stressed out and you're doing it to yourself. And actually, when I was looking at this list, guys, I go, oh, oh, I actually have like three boxes already. So one of them is being grinchy around your kids. And I did not think of this until I read this story, but it says, be careful how much you complain or vent about anything holiday around your kids, especially when they're young. Kids ages up to nine years old process information egocentrically, which means they, when they find out that there's a problem, they assume it's their fault. And what we're talking about here is not like you are sitting down your children and mm-hmm. scolding them. You are just talking to yourself or complaining about something in the house and they hear it and it strains them because they, they won't have like a nostalgic, awesome memory. Oh, well, that's sad. About Christmas time. They'll just remember when you were ticked off or y'all were fighting about the Christmas decorations. There was an Instagram reel. I'm sure a lot of people have seen it. And it's where, like, it's like, you know, the words are just over the the video of, like, sparkling trees and winter wonderland Mm -hmm. scenes. And it says, when your wife tells you that she wants you to help her with three Christmas trees or whatever it is, just do it. Because that is her way of, like, you know, enjoying the holidays. And it's like, basically, it's like telling husbands, just please just get the ladder out. This is your gift to her. Just get the ladder out and help her do it. Happy wife, happy life. But when you hear... Couples are bickering over that kind of stuff. Your kids are absorbing it. And in in my world, I'm just telling you guys that I, I think for a lot of mamas out there, we just talk to ourselves about stuff and you don't realize your kids are taking it in. Y'all, I don't know how my mom did it. Five kids, no help, zero. My dad was at the restaurant all the time. We had no babysitter. We had no nanny. We had no housekeeper. We didn't have an extra person to give my mom a pair of hands for five kids. Yet all of my Christmas memories are very nostalgically happy. They are real sparkly. Like, it's because they did oh, a good job. Oh, when those job. Christmas bells came out. Now, did my mom not complain, or did I just not latch on to the complaint? No, I mean, I think they did a good job, and, you know, you never talk about money in front of your kids. You don't want to stress them out, like, oh, my God, are we going to have enough money to do this or that? If you look at all the children of a divorce, so many kids of divorce feel like, oh, my God, I must have been the cause for this. I caused this. And they blame themselves. You talked about them being egocentric. Yes. Yeah, up to because- nine years old, your child, if there's a problem, they assume it's their fault. No matter what the problem is, not just holiday time. No, you got to reassure them. It has nothing to do about. with you. But, I mean, you can't. You, As a parent, 
one of your top responsibilities is to shield them from the horrible things that you are going through yourself. You don't need to burden them with your problems. Well, that's what we're saying, right? But, Ryan, but the whole point of this article is you don't realize what you're saying even under your breath or out loud to oh, yourself. Oh, they pick up everything. Hears. They pick up everything. Other mistakes that people make around Christmas time is making the holidays... Like making yourself a holiday martyr. Let's say that you are putting all these people on the list and you're thinking of, like, how am I going to do this, 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 and this, and you don't take time for yourself. I think that's a regular thing for everybody's life. Another one is making the holidays about getting, not giving. Making a wish list and opening gifts is fun. Just make sure to, especially if you have kids in your household, you know, remember the holidays are time to be generous to other people too. But that's part of becoming the complainer part because you have so many people on your list you're trying to Now, care. let me ask you, is this on the list? Because when you are divorced... And your parents are divorced, and you've got kids, and you've got 10 different stops to make. I think you're really kind of shortchanging the kids. You know, it sucks to have to travel from point A to point B to point C to point D. And I think you're just better off, like, don't be stressed out. So what, Say, not hey, take you them know, to the I mean, you know, house then? like, for me, we came to an agreement, like, with my parents, because they were both divorced. I was divorced. And I was like, how about maybe the next day we come over, like, on the 26th when we celebrate something different with you? But having, you know, because her mom, Faith was with her mom, and then her mom's parents, and her parents were divorced, so she had to go to her mom, and then her dad, and then she come over to me, and I'm like, I'm not going to take her to my mom and my dad and all the different family members. It's just stressful. You know, I have a friend whose parents were divorced, divorced when she was 14. And when she grew up and had kids, she told her parents, who had then remarried and had their own extras, listen, I'm not... And we're, I'm just going to set this line right now. I mean, it was really smart of her. She set the line when they were toddlers that I'm going to host Christmas and everybody comes here. Whether y'all get along or not, everyone's coming here. You're welcome to come. So that we you don't, don't have, have to. to make every, like the children go yeah. boom, 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 boom. Four right? Christmases. For, yes, four Christmases. Totally. And I think that, to, to, you know, Special K, we talked about this last week with you and Sam, that there was a stat about holiday travel is not, quote, vacation because you don't really have a choice. You know, yeah. if, if your choice for vacation in December was going to be Hawaii, that's you can't go there because because your mom doesn't live in Hawaii. No. You go to Virginia. Yeah. So is it really a vacation? But it is a thing that people stress out about, like how much the, their holiday is to go see their family, but it's not really like, how do you balance it? Does your mom ever come here for Christmas ever? Or y'all she always has, go to her? She's de- definitely come to here for Christmas, and we've never, in all the years she lived there, 15 years, we've never gone to her house. I mean, because the lake is not fun in the winter time. Yeah. No. And it's kind of dreary. And then would your over. parents who are divorced with their own lives ever agree to come here for a Christmas? So together? you and her here. Not together. I'm just saying your dad and his lady companion yeah, who's yeah. been with for 20 something years. Yes. And then I'm your sure. mom, yes. like you host them for a Christmas in Houston versus you splitting Virginia and Delaware. No, that would never happen. No. They would they would come the first half of the week and then the second half of the week. You know, they they'd split that up so they don't cross over. However, really? after this many years, they don't want to cross paths. No, that's only my dad. And my oh. mom's fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, however, my brother has put his foot down in that manner. Like you said, yeah. we're going to do it here. You can come or not. And in that case, both of them have come every time. Yeah, see, they'll do so it for the grandkids. That's what, you got to lay down the law and put down your foot. You know, kids come first and it's like, I get holiday tr- traditions, but every tradition had to start somewhere. And poor Booster, he's going to be start your own. dragged around with me to all of my different family. <laughs> starting at dad's house, then going to my brother's house, and then driving six hours down to my mom's house and what about his mom? His mom uh, came for Thanksgiving. So, or actually, he went up there for right before Thanksgiving. So, so he saw her. Taking a break from Christmas. Yes. And then she's going to come down for a rodeo, we hope. Oh, okay. You know, I, I just had this conversation yesterday with my sister. I'm one of five kids, for those who are newer to the show. I'm the youngest girl. There's a boy, three girls and a boy. And I was just telling her yesterday how, you know, this is this is a year where we have decided to travel over the Christmas holiday. And we're trying to figure out how to make sure, like, actual Christmas Day is family-oriented but not. And, you know, you know what? she made a really good point because you've said this before, Kevin, and I appreciate it because there was a time where I was not living in Houston for the holidays. And my holiday vacation was coming home. Um, she goes, you know, Rilla, though, in the end, we don't all live in different cities anymore. We mm-hmm. all live here. Yeah. It's it's fine if we don't see each other all on that one day because we well, can go down to the street family restaurant and have Sunday lunch together. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm just but saying. I just don't want my mom to feel like we don't well, you want guys mom have to be your alone. own thing going on. I'll do my own thing. I refuse to uh, to let that happen. Absolutely. I'm like, no, no, no. 
No, no, no. You no, come no. here. Well, that's somewhere. Yeah, that's different because yeah. your your father's no longer with us. Right. And you don't want your mom being alone. Yeah, and she would be like, it's fine. I'll just go to church Christmas morning with like one or two of the kids, like whichever one she can get to go along. She's fine with that. But I'm like, I can't stand by on Christmas morning after we've done the whole, you know, yay, open presents thing and then be like... Well, I guess just lay around pajamas all day, and I don't, I don't know what my mom is doing. You know my what I mean? Mo- my mom will be home alone on Christmas Day. Aww. Yeah, so we don't go down there for, like, the... You going to FaceTime at least? I'm sure we will, but it's it hurts my heart. That's why she came down for Thanksgiving, because she didn't have nothing else to do. Aww. So wait, because how far is your brother from your mom? Six hours. Oh, okay. that's, Delaware, that's yeah, a Delaware is not close to Virginia. I know it looks close on the map, but it is not. So she doesn't want to drive to him for She Christmas has morning? in the past. Yeah, yeah. She has done it every single year, and so finally she was like how about you boys come on down here and so she's got a lot of things at her house that needs to be fixed as well mm-hmm. so I'm going to have to start going twice a year well, that now could be just your to gift. fix her stuff go up there and fix everything oh she she already put it out there she's like I, I got my wish list it's all of these electrical and plumbing things that I need fixed yeah so, See, to me like- I've never had the guts I've always wanted to just say you know what we're going away for Christmas. We're not even going to be in Houston. We're just going to go somewhere, go on vacation, go somewhere tropical on a beach or something. That's your gift. Actually, I've never been able I to pull it off. I've wanted to, but I've never done it. Do well, it. But you're not doing it. Like, What is stopping well, my daughter's you? Because an adult stopping now. me is I just feel like, especially after losing my dad 10 years ago, every single holiday that ha- is happening, you don't know if it's your last one with the older generation in your family. And so I want to make sure I have that memory. But yeah, that's why we leave either before Christmas Day, we get back in time for Christmas Eve, or we leave right uh. after Christmas Day. And we can do our own thing. But on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, I want to make sure I'm here, closest to my mom and all that stuff. So I, however you're going to treat the holidays, don't make the big mistakes most people make around Christmas, kind of forgetting what it's all about. And don't make, don't be a holiday martyr. There are a lot of women, I'm talking to you especially, don't be a holiday martyr. We're, we're martyring every day of the year. You don't take care of yourself. It's okay if all the cookies didn't get baked. I let that go years ago. I used to make those awesome cookies every year. Phoenix loved those cookies, those chocolate mint cookies I made. I made those cookies. I can't tell you how many years I've made those cookies. But anyway, happy holidays. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock. Thank you so much for listening to the Rural Ryan Show. So anything you missed, you go to the podcast page at krbe.com or download the app wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, and there you can find us. Have a great Monday, Houston, Texas. Bye. Bye. Bye.